flush it in front of the uh, camera. Oh, we're talking, talking about we're talking about the CD. Oh, like, they're all asleep yeah. tonight, guys. All asleep. Pops, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> it is now. It is on. It's on now. So we are streaming live now. We're just a little bit behind the curve. So this this is the uh, cover of the EP that you uh, recorded uh, recently and put out, and it's a, it's a series of cover versions. It is. It, it's a bit beige. <laughs> not, not, the the music, not the music, the yeah. just the cover. No, we scored some um, some studio time over at Half Time Studios down in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. so thank you guys. Um, and we thought, you know, we were recording the second album, and we didn't want to kind of mix up our studios. What we're going to do with this other studio? And we've got these covers that we occasionally throw into our live sets. That we really love. We all do our own twist on them, and we thought, well, here's some studio time. Let's hammer them out, and they've come out really, really nicely. Yeah, because I think we played a couple of tracks. Definitely played uh, Jolene. What are the other tracks on there? Oh yeah, good, good, Molly, good golly, Miss Molly. Um, yeah. Lord, want you buy me a Mercedes mm -hmm. Benz, Janis Joplin, and Folsom Prison, Folsom Prison, Prison Blues. Folsom Prison Blues was the one we played. Yeah, yeah, do like a bit of Folsom Prison Blues. And I, and I know you are a big Johnny Cash fan. Absolutely, yeah. Who isn't? Big Johnny Cash fan. Who isn't Johnny Cash fan? Well, that's it. It's um, he's the master, the legend, really, isn't he? When it comes to country music and uh, anyway, for for, for anybody who doesn't know about the band, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, we've been going what six years now. I think it is. Yeah. Um, we're kind of a blues rock, rock and roll band. Filthy uh, blues rock. Filthy and roll. blues rock and roll. Dirtier the better. But there's yeah, there's all sorts of elements of uh, other kind of influences. So there's soul and there's country and there's all sorts we kind of throw in. Alternative rock, kind of grunge rock, um, just all sorts. So there's no, there's no, there's no one quite like us, is there? At all? I don't think. So. I don't think so. I've not come across anybody similar to you guys, really, to be honest. Yeah. Not necessarily well, we a good meet thing. a lot of funky <laughs> rock bands, but then I, I don't think we could really class ourselves as just a funky rock band. I think there's a hell of a lot more. Yeah, there is. Yeah. Blues, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have violins going sometimes, don't you? You have mandolins running yeah. and all that sort of thing. Well, like I've never that. met a band that have a, a similar sound to us. It's all no. we, we do something quite different. So. And when you do a video, very often it's western themed as well. <laughs> well, yeah. Be That's just because Mark loves dressing up as a cowboy. <laughs> 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 no, I, I, years ago I promised myself I'd never wear a cowboy hat, and I had to sort of go back on that. <laughs> now you can't get enough of it. It was a fantasy. <laughs> Every Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the saloon. Fair enough. Enough said. Uh, yeah, in St. Mead's. <laughs> what's, what's the first one you're going to play for us this evening? Uh, we're going to do a song. It's, it's, called, it's got a strange title, actually. Uh, this is one Mike wrote. It's called Ham Dog. It's all about um, uh, sort of social media and internet ignorance. So it's about people who read a headline, look at a picture, and then decide they know all about the topic. He wrote it's it about me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of, bit, lot, of, lot of that going, going around these days, so I um, thought we'd write a song about it. Mm. Yeah. Whilst we haven't picked our track list for our second album, this is one that's in contention. So. Yeah. Oh, excellent. So it's a new song, really, to us. Yeah. Well, of course, um, it's acoustic, yeah. so it's massively different from oh, how Yeah, it always is. We should yeah. say that, actually. Yeah, yeah. We don't normally play acoustic. No, yeah, because you don't normally yeah. play acoustic, but because we're in this sort of studio setting here, it's hard work to get all the big amps in and stuff like that it, you know, ruin the sound for it us. Giving it a go, dog. I <laughs> well, we, you know, gives it a nice exclusive feel, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think this different. one we wrote like two weeks before we actually went in the studio. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. yeah so. And, and it, there's, there's no swear words on it. On, no. <laughs> can put yeah, a few in if you want. Uh, no, 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 sure. no, no. <laughs> Don't need to be getting the station into it. Anyway, guys, off you go. Seems people are looking for the answer No one bothers trying to find them out Read the headline, look at all the pictures And act like they know what it's all about Shock them off, scare them in a park, keep them thinking that the hammer's about to fall in. Willful ignorance, keep them scared, mentally impaired, make sure that the truth won't be shared. Willful ignorance, people cry, the cute dog head face cancer. Turns out it was just a slice of ham We need a spot the subtle misdirection 
think before you trust that in command. Shock them all, scare them in a ball, keep them thinking that the hammer's about to fall in. Willful ignorance, keep them scared, mentally impaired, make sure that the truth won't be shared. Excellent. Got some uh, shout outs. Uh, people watching the show and listening. Uh, shout outs to uh, Michael Day, uh, Chris Davis, and uh, Jam Bradley. Ah. We love you guys. Hello. Thank Hello. you very much. <laughs> we love Jam. We love a bit of Jam. <laughs> but we love all of our fans. <laughs> <laughs> all of our fans equally, there is no favouritism. Anyway. <laughs> but we do love Jam. Now, so this, this current al album that you're recording, uh, did I not see somewhere on the line you sort of, you've been trying to crowdfund it? Yeah, so. Um, Money is hard out there. The whole recording, well, trying to get recording contracts is a bit of a nightmare. There's a lot of good bands out there, and a lot of people who are holding onto their cash, recording industry, looking at you. So we threw out a bit of a request to our fans who answered our call. So thank you, all of you who helped and uh, have pre-ordered effectively your copies of album number two. Obviously, apologies to our people who've <laughs> who've given us money and are still waiting. But you know, once we've co kicked all the calls out and re-recorded everything, we'll get it out to you as soon as we can. Maybe with a couple of freebies. I mean, the plan was to get it out at least by October, November. Was but, it? Um, like I say, what with my voice having, having problems with my voice and stuff, and uh, just the way things have gone, and we we want this album to be sort of spot on. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. We're not gonna we're not gonna put anything out there that isn't that isn't absolutely what it should be, and we're not gonna go all Chinese democracy on it. But, yeah. It's not going to take as long as the first album. Yeah, no. so the wait will definitely years. be worth it. So, again, thank you to everyone who's put their hands in their pockets and shown their faith in us. How, how is your voice, uh, Mark? Uh, Richard Spooner asked, are you going to be uh, OK for recording next week? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> should be all right. I'll have a word with the missus. I'll see what she says. She should let me. That's yeah. Spud, the producer. Should be fine, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Spud's producer. Shout out to um, Spud. Yeah. Uh, shout, shout out to Spud. Shout out to Spud, yeah. <laughs> And where, whereabouts are you doing the majority of the recording? Oh, it's, it's a secret place. It's a secret location. The Bat Cave. Yeah. <laughs> the Bat Cave, that's all we this can is, say. Yeah. Not the Bat Cave, it's the Mojo Cave. Yeah, well, Mojo all, Cave. All I'll say is it's <laughs> definitely not a Zeppelin uh, shored off the shores of London. Definitely yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a vivid imagination. So how, how long does it take you to write up an album? Or you've still got more tracks that you can never fit onto the album? There's a few. 
We're writing, we're writing all the time, aren't we? We, we are, yeah. We've written I more mean, since we've recorded. Yeah, we've recorded. We know there's about 14, 15 songs we've recorded in the album where we started recording, and the album's going to be chosen from those. Um, but, yeah, we're still writing more, aren't we? So there'll, there'll be an album three, no doubt. Whenever inspiration <laughs> strikes us. Yeah, you can't so, really control it. You, know, you, don't, you don't sort of sit down and say, I'm going to write out, uh, yeah. out songs for an album. It just sort of happens. doesn't work sort of thing, no. 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 Well, well, gonna, not for us, maybe some people. What are you going to do, whittle it down to 10 or 12 or so? Yeah, or, 10 or yeah. 11 I've brought. Um, it yeah. depends. I, we're going to get the tracks out there, we'll have a listen, probably have a couple of drinks. How many songs did we figure it out? Argue for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we recorded 14. <laughs> do, do, you, do you gauge how the, the new songs go with the audience so you sort of think, oh, we can... No. No? We, no? no it's all down the <laughs> <laughs> no, no, to be honest, I mean, honestly, I think if we, it wasn't our choice, you know, it, it, we kind of loses its it, the, the want to do it. Do you know, I mean, it'll be. I mean, they all go, they, all, they all go down well. Life, obviously, some go down better than, yeah. better than others. But we'll sit there and we'll pick the best ones that make a coherent record, and all the studio versions are as yeah. good as they can be. And if that means leaving off a song that we thought was going to definitely be on it, then we'll do that. Some, sometimes there's tracks that are massive crowd pleasers in a live environment, but. When you record them in a studio, they don't quite. No, it could be different. So, yeah, yeah. You know, I can think of one example. I won't let, won't let it slip. Which, but that you know, I'm not sure we'll make the cut in the album. But it's one of our fans' favourites when we play it live. So, yeah. Sometimes there's a track that you know just has got a certain amount of electricity and energy when you yeah. play it live that you just somewhere along the line when you're trying to reproduce it in the studio, you yeah. just can't because you know you when you're playing live, you got all that adrenaline going. You're sort of working off the audience. The audience is working off you. I think that's where we, where we come a cropper with the first album, why it took so long, is because we're constantly trying to replicate how it sounds live and better that. And Which is impossible, oh, really. When you're trying to, yeah, and trying to... The, the, the EP, that is how we sound live. Yes. So we, we went away from all the fancy production, all the extra instruments, so left all the string orchestras at home, which was a relief for me, I didn't have to do that again. Um, and we did it kind of replicating what we do live, and uh, it sounded really good. You record the EP pretty sharp, you said, pretty quick. Sort yeah. Of like. yeah, all the backing stuff was recorded effectively in the live environment. Mm -hmm. Then we overdubbed the solos and the vocals, and yeah, it's that. That is how we. Well, in a week, like. wasn't it? Well, like a couple mm -hmm. of days. Yeah. yeah. The whole, so yeah, we pretty we quick then. Pretty quick days. then. Yeah. No metronome. Yeah. Click, no, click, no click track. No click. That's good for us right. as well. No metronome. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> what is the uh, next song you're going to do? Us, well, do it's, uh, it's a song off our EP. Yeah, I was going to find the words for it. He's not giving me a chance to do that yet. Sorry. <laughs> you mean you don't Just know the words case. to some of our songs? No, this, 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 this is a song we learned because Blast. our um, our lead guitarist couldn't make a festival, <coughs> so we thought we'd pick a new one, especially for the crowd that I that I could play. And we're only going to really going to play it once. It's kind of stuck around forever, hasn't it? Yeah. It's, it's become a bit of a bit of a crowd favourite. Always going to get rid of it. Yeah, it kind of a. We, we didn't expect to want to have to do well, it again, we, did well, we? We were, <laughs> were going to learn nine to five yeah. by Dolly Parton, and it just fell horribly in the, in, in the rehearsals. Mm. And then we picked out another Dolly Parton track, and that one seemed to work. It did. Yeah. Right. This is Jolene. Take my man Jolene, 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 Jolene Please don't take him just because you can Your beauty is beyond compare Flaming locks of auburn hair With ivory skin and eyes of emerald green your smile is like the breath of spring Your voice is soft like summer rain And I cannot compete with you, Jolene He talks about you in his sleep There's nothing I can do to keep from crying When I calls your name, Jolene Now I can easily understand you can easily take my man, but you don't know what it means to me, Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm begging of you, please don't take my man, Jolene, 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 Jolene. 
Talk with you. My happiness depends on you, and whatever you decide to do, Jolene. Now you can have your choice of men, but I can never love again. He's the only one for me, Jolene. Jolene, 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 Jolene. Great cover, great cover. Uh, got some other comments, sir. Uh, Robbie Gibbs, awesome, he says. And uh, Thierry uh, Taylor, great cover. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Thank, Thank you very you. much for uh, listening and watching to the show, Al. people. Uh, you, you, you've just done a, a gig in Peter, haven't you, a few, few weeks ago? Yeah, yeah. We played Charters a little, yeah. a little while back now, I think, a couple of weeks ago. A little few weeks. into one. Oh, it's, yeah. It's so always great playing on a boat. Oh, yeah, yeah. pub Charters. <laughs> We've, we've, had actually really really pretty manic, we've had actually a really heavy give it gigging period in the last few months, haven't we? And yeah. it's just we've just got to start booking some more because we've only got one in the diary now, haven't we? So, so charters, I'll be it. calling you again. Yeah. <laughs> back at charters next week. <laughs> no, we're not back at charters. No, we're next not. Week. It's more like a period where we get Mark in the studio for the next couple of months. Yeah, so you're going to take a little bit of a rest. Yeah, because Mark belts out when he's in the studio, obviously doing gigs and stuff like that. Yeah, you've got to you've got to you've got to class that voice. And having kids as well, all the horrible snotty colds they, they, yeah. they bring home for me, <laughs> my little presents. How, how old are they now? Uh, I've got one that's, that's one, yeah. and the other one's ten. Ah, so so we've, got, we've got Otis, named after Otis Redding, mm -hmm. who's, the, who's the one-year-old, and Milo um, was not owned, uh, named oh. after anyone famous, <laughs> so uh, yeah, he, he's ten, bless him. So he's the one who brings them all home from uh, primary school? Well, yeah, it's it's the the young one. He's the one that's bringing them home. He's like a yeah, little little germ bag at the moment, you know. <laughs> Help build Have up some of this, Dad. Yeah, really. Helps you build up your resistance when you get a little bit older, sort of thing. <laughs> I don't you know. know. <laughs> it's put me in an early grave, I think, you know. <laughs> but uh, the amount of colds I had last year. But uh, yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling all right now, so it's I'm hoping to get that studio. And get I mean, it, it does take one hell of a lot of time and dedication, doesn't it? When you have got family, you have got jobs. Uh, and like you say, two, three gigs in this one weekend. Oh, that we is really hard work. Really yeah. hard work. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of, for me, I kind of always feel a bit bad with my wife being stuck at home with the kids, you know, and uh, me having to go out gigging. But, you know, we kind of love it, you know. I think mm. Hopefully our wives understand that, you know. <laughs> How often do you get together and practice as well? Um, 
Not as much as we'd like, mainly because we've been gigging so much recently. And recording. And recording. Yeah. And, uh, Before that, we were doing every other, every, every yeah. couple of weeks. When mm. we first started out as a band, yeah. we, it was every week. You know, mm. it was solid. Um, now, I don't think we need to practice as much. That we were saying well, we would like, like to. Yeah. You know, it's, it's one of them. Yeah. We're at that sort of kind of. We feel like we're at that standard now where yeah. we can just do a big string of gigs without having to. You must have a big, um, big sort of back catalogue of songs you can sort of work through when you're playing. We have a good. Yeah, I mean, we, we yeah. like I said, we compete with all the cover bands. Like, you know, we play pubs. We're not like the kind of bands that play 45-minute sets here, there. And, you know what I mean? We're playing two and a half hours mm. and getting a support act in as well just to sort of help out and warm up the crowd. And you must, in it, like everybody says, it is, it's hard work when you're in an originals band. You can find some covers here and there, but it's, it is hard work when yeah. you're original bands to get gigs. It, it does restrict you down to certain venues here and there, though. A big thank you to all the venues out there, actually. Yeah. Book, pushing original, original music. music yeah. Nicely done there. Nicely done. Thanks yeah. to all of those who actually go out there. Because if you don't go out there, these places shut down all the time, and then there's nowhere left. That's very really true. Well, if there's no original music. There won't be any covers to do in the future. Well, so that's quite true as well, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. Gonna run out. Yeah. The thing is, yeah. you meet the most amazing people at these gigs at these venues as well. It's not just about the venues; it's about the people that go it's to the venues true. and you talk to them, it's not just and then they become your followers and good <coughs> friends. It's like next year we're playing a gig where we're playing. The t we're going abroad for a fan. Uh, Czech Next Republic. Oh, that'd be good. We have yeah, a one of our fans is playing, paying for us to go and play in her hometown in Czech Republic for her birthday. So What's yeah. the name of the town? It's, it's, it's near, it's it's near, it's near Brno. Near Prague. Yeah. It's, it's near Brno. It's yeah, you'll yeah. enjoy it. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've done a couple of weeks out there a long time ago mm. and uh, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, well, yeah. I think they've raised somewhat 300 people for this big birthday party. Oh, it's really. you know, brilliant. With a headline act. And bless them, they're, f they're f flying us out there, putting us up in a hotel. And it's She's great. listening. Hello, Sharka. Yeah, Sharka. <laughs> Thank you, Sharka. She's been with us like from quite early on, really. Mm. You know, she mm. saw us in Cambridge and. Uh, oh, she's and been acoustic to a lot of gigs. Yeah. She saw us acoustic. And she fell that's true. Us. That's true. Excellent, excellent. That's that's a great gig to look forward to, isn't it? Uh, Kelly Martin says uh, Jolene is one of my favourites already. Got it on iTunes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. We love all our fans, but the fans who buy our music, we love them even more. <laughs> of course. What's the uh, next song you're going to do for us this evening? Uh, a little song called Voodoo Eyes. Again, I've got. A no, you're not. That's okay. <laughs> no, you're not. Oh, hang on. I think he's going to change instruments. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all right because he's got. Uh, all I ask, all I ask, one thing: advanced notes for the change. This is one of these funny <laughs> songs that um, I actually wrote a song um, <laughs> with lyrics and everything, and then Mark loved the, the music but didn't like the lyrics so uh, it, was, it was shocking so he wrote, we wrote the lyrics about something completely different and uh, so it's a bit of an amalgamation isn't it what was it originally called I can't uh, remember now, now, now I'm Out it was originally called Now I'm Out what song is this yeah. food wise <laughs> oh right okay. it's good, good, good job we told you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, th our fans will notice that especially the ones that have never seen us play acoustic before this is completely different from the original yeah. so we, we like to Change the occasional like song, don't we? Funky, yeah, when we play jazz. acoustically, we, we do something a bit different, don't we? Yeah, so it's, yeah. It's, it's good to be acoustic, though, isn't it? Because it makes you more versatile. You can you can squeeze Absolutely. into different venues and stuff like that. Mandolin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I love the sound of the mandolin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Someone's got to. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Says the bassist. <laughs> 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 Haze on a Saturday night. The drums are pounding tight on the blind lights. She walks up and holds out her hand. That big girl's gonna make you a man. Drip off the walls by the snake like one. Oh, she got control. Now, won't you come and get some? You're so weak, you don't understand. That my girl's gonna make you a man. She got them voodoo eyes. Do Do stay gonna blow your mind. Oh, she got them voodoo eyes. Don't you look away? Don't you wanna taste it? 
Some more shout outs. Shout outs to uh, Tony Nero, Char- Charlotte Barton, and uh, Andy Hughes. About time you come back on the show, Mr. Hughes, if you're about. Uh, uh, yeah, if anybody uh, has got any questions for the band, uh, um, just uh, send them via Facebook and uh, we'll ask them for you. Uh, so, Mark, how yep. old was you when you sort of thought to yourself, oh, I want to be involved in a rock band? 17 years old. Just like that, 17. 17. I was at an Oasis gig and, uh, well, it was we, we got these tickets to go and see Oasis at Main Road 96. Mm. Um, we found out many years later that Noel Gallagher claims that's the, the, the greatest Oasis gig of all time, so we're quite happy about Shift that. About that it was insane, and I just remember, you know, one minute standing on the floor and the next minute just being thrown up in the air, like, and it was just a mass of kind of bodies jumping around in ecstasy. It was brilliant, and. Um, I was happily sandwiched in between two quite busty twins at the time. And as a 17-year-old lad, that's quite an experience, as well as the greatest <laughs> rock and roll band I've ever seen. So it, that was it. After that, it was, I have to do this for a living. Um, I never quite made it that far. I'm not you know, making a living out of it yet, but I'm kind of living you, a dream a little bit. Yeah, that's right. You're still enjoying it sort of yeah, thing. So, absolutely. So had you been in a number of previous bands before you got into the Mojo slide? Um, yeah, quite a few. What was the pedigree then? Go on, you, what was the name of the first band you was in? Because the name of the first band is always an interesting. We never one. really come up with a name. I think I come up. I like the name the Velvet Smile. Yeah. And there was a, I think, Goldmine as well. I think that was we kind of. Yeah. Cheesy. And we we just did a lot of kind of Britpop covers back then. We were just young lads, you know, seventeen, eighteen, um, just having a laugh really. And I, I mean, I, I moved out of my parents when I was about eighteen and got a little bed set and we all used to come or we used to get loads of people crammed in this little bed set it's only supposed to have two visitors we got about 20 and we used to have these mad little parties with guitars and we just sit there singing and playing all night and uh, amongst other things you know he was having, <laughs> having great fun and so who was the person who came up with the ideas of, of, of forming like a, a blues sort of rock, rock band? Um, who had the who again, had the original I, idea i would say that was mine but then you know i I'd been out of the game for a while because I'd been in like indie rock bands making kind of indie music, in and out of bands, some great, some not so good. Um, and I just needed a sort of kind of a fresh start. And my, this is about the time my son was born. Um, so I kind of for, gave it up for a while. Time consuming. <coughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't. It wasn't really my choice to give it up, but um, I had to. And uh, I gave it probably about four or five years. 
And then um, it was like, right, time to get back. In get the a saddle. bit of itchy feet. And uh, by that time, I'd sort of really got into the Stones and bands like mm-hmm. that. So I wanted to do Once something. Once you see the Stones live, you'd say they was the greatest rock and roll band you'd ever seen. You, you'd, you'd probably be right. <laughs> I wouldn't disagree with you. You know, at the end of that, I mean, well, I sort of said about Oasis back then. I mean, yes, of course, you said they're, they're all admit it themselves. Yeah. They're not the greatest musicians. Yeah. But it's a show it's that just counts, the noise isn't it? Really, made. sometimes it's just a show. It was show. something else, yeah. Yeah. And you, you know the whole experience and stuff like that. Absolutely. So. But when you see this bunch of seventy-year-old geezers, or plus, I, just, I saw Mick Jagger on the other day. Like, what was he seventy-four? Yeah. And just like the way he's dancing on stage, I'm thinking, my God, even I can't. I don't do that. You know what I mean? He's just unbelievable, isn't he? Yes. He yeah. really is. Yeah. And, um, I, I just hope one day that you know I could not be as fit as that old geezer, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then there's then there's the total opposite, isn't there? With, with his uh, sidekick, Mr. Richards, Richards yeah. <laughs> yeah. who's just preserved well, so really. Yeah, he's, uh, he's yeah. just yeah. a miracle of uh, pickled in Jack Daniels or something like that, really. <laughs> uh, they took Lemmy, they'll take him soon. Don't oh, say don't things say up. Jesus. Don't say that. Oh, no, I thought no. Lemmy would live forever. <laughs> he gave him a mic. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll, still, I'll probably I'll say Keith Richards is pickled, pickled in. Uh, <laughs> he looks like it, doesn't he? Yeah. Bless his heart. But Great autobiography. Yeah. So, who who was the f- who was the first member of the band apart from yourself, then, Mark? Who did you approach? Uh, Michael. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so, yeah. So we worked together, didn't we? Yeah, and we worked together for about two years. Um, magical time that was. <laughs> is that <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> this place, classic. Like, you know, and then we uh, hired Mr. Fenner here from the Hi. internet. The most uh, mainstream way. We heard it. We, it is hide help. Have <laughs> <laughs> they paid you yet? Still um, waiting for the check. Still, we got a yeah. paycheck. The big pay. We'll pay him in IOUs. I, yeah, I, I found the job. I was look, I was looking for a band to join, and I found <laughs> I found Mark's advert on um, on joinmyband.co.uk. So, and the rest is history. Were you, and you all sort of living roughly the same sort of area. Oh, Cambridgeshire. Yeah. Cambridgeshire. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm Cambridgeshire. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? But yeah. One of us from the village. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we always the basis from the village, isn't it? Yeah. And then Matt, you were from Join My Band as well, weren't you? Uh yeah, maybe. I think. It was definitely yeah. online. Yeah. I'm on lots of these things online like I find people on. I thought it was um, swingers dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Grinder, <laughs> wasn't it? Oh, yeah. the place poor, Matt, poor Matt. I just turned up at a warehouse. It was you that found him, wasn't it? <laughs> I found him, yes. I definitely <laughs> found him. Yeah. It was uh, probably one of the better adverts. It was alright. <laughs> So, it's just a what sort of advert did you see? Could you remember, Matt? What did, what did I? I, I, they, I can't remember. Uh, they put out... Young Man was, Seeking. I can't remember. <laughs> young Man Seeking. Yeah, it's kind of a blues old rock seeking. band. And I yeah. said, look, I, I can do this. Here's loads of recordings of me, if this is what you mm. want. Because mm. you play the violin as well, don't you? I Oof. can play the violin. More often I play the viola. Oh, viola, yeah, sorry. Oh, you, you've, yeah. you've touched Mark, Matt's button there, haven't you? Oh, oh, it's enough, not yeah. a viola violin, it's a viola button. Not that yeah. button. How many strings you got on the, the mandolin there? Eight. Eight strings. Mm. Mm. And how long have you been playing that for? Oh, God. Uh, well, I, I learnt violin and then viola in school, mm. playing in numerous orchestras, and the mandolin is just strung the same as a violin. Yeah. So it was a case of... Every now and then I'd use it, my dad had one. Um, now I play my own one because I've grown up. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so I throw it into the odd tracks on the albums. So, yeah, I, our opening track on our debut album, Addicted, go check it out. It's got mandolin on it because it sounded jang- more jangly than the, than the guitar. Like, if you listen to uh, Losing My Religion by REM, you strip the mandolin out of that, it's mm. going be the same. So, I like to throw it in when it's suitable and when they let me. There's one song in our debut album that has a James Bond theme to it on the mandolin. Not on the record, Not is it no. not? Only no. live. Only live. Only live. Not on the album. Yeah, yeah. Oh, see a gig. I did not know that. I'm so the yeah. drummer. I know that. <laughs> Don't listen to the drummer. I don't listen to If don't you want to hear two <laughs> bars of a James Bond theme, come to one of our acoustic gigs and you might be lucky. <coughs> yeah. Now there's an offer. We're not playing mm. that on time. What is the uh, next song you're going to play for us, guys? Right, this is a song. <laughs> we got a story Mark can tell you about this one. Go on. Would <laughs> <laughs> you like to hear the story? Yeah, go on. Right. Yeah, no rudeness, no rudeness. The story is always said okay. before we play it. All right, well, it's Matt what it's called thought first. it'd be a really good idea that when we do this song, we'd call out to the crowd and go, is there any... The song's called I Do Time for Daisy. And we call out to the, the audience, is there anyone called Daisy in the audience? So we, we were playing this festival, uh, homegrown, homegrown, festival. homegrown Festival, and um, I called out to the audience, is there anyone called Daisy? This woman put her hands up, and I was like, oh, great, come on forward. 
So she comes on, uh, so she sort of stands up and then pushes her eight year old child towards me. <laughs> <laughs> Bearing in mind the song's called I Do Time for Daisy, <laughs> that was the most awkward four minutes yes, of my life. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, yeah. you guess what the song's about? It's a little risky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's leave that to the yeah. uh, imagination. Yeah. So, yes, we'll let all of you out there in the radio lounge <coughs> try and figure out what the song's about. This, this is I Do Time for Daisy. Right. She's got angel eyes and a devil smile. Don't think that you'll ever have her up the aisle. If she's whispering in your ear, you'll be giving. You know it's too late, it's only beginning. I do time for Daisy. That much I know to be true. One look into my eyes, said Daisy. And you're doing what you said you never do. <laughs> so sort of songwriting um, you all take your turn in a bit of songwriting then or is Mike the main songwriter um, well the first album was different the first album majority was written by me and Mike uh, I wrote most of the come up with the ideas of the songs and Mike helped me out with the music um, I think he wrote was it one song one or two, so I mean, like actual songs. All right, like all the music. Um, <laughs> 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 really 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 I don't want to upset you all. Don't upset you all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bag out in a minute. But you know what I mean. I think it was just addicted, and the rest of it was just the music. Can't really remember. Yeah. yeah. Probably um, just the music. Typical lyricist, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> just the music. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, I did all the yeah, 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 you can carry on outside. Matt's coming to the to the party, haven't you? And um, so yeah, this second album is going to be 
more even between the three of us. I think more collaborative. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we take we take ideas to the to the band and, and we all work on it, don't we, together? <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I think my, Matt and well, both both guys have really come along as songwriters since I first met them. Um, and uh, I mean, I think m with Matt, I mean, you were almost a solo artist before you come along. You know, before you came along, really, weren't you? Just putting it kindly, thank you. No, but you you had a fan base, you know, on online fan base that were sort of would do whatever you asked them to, really. Um, there's a couple. There's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> so you were doing it. Well, I, I, I just wrote music that I liked, that I wanted to do. I didn't write it for any purpose yeah. and put it out there for free. This is much more focused effort. So yeah, I think Mike, you you were a songwriter, and, um, looking to get um, get a, some kind of publishing deal. Publishing I was deal, trying to get published yeah. before the band. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so. I think oh, we're all songwriters in our own right. I mean, I won a songwriting award years ago with with the help from a, another musician. Um, don't like to talk about it. Yeah, I don't like <laughs> to talk about that. No. <laughs> um, He's got it lacquered and raised on the wall in his living room. No, I don't. <laughs> no. All right. I've got a dusty old paper sort of shoved in like loads of folders somewhere. I think you know in the, in the loft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what <laughs> so, <I'm talking> about. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, so we, yeah, we're all doing okay. I mean, I think we, we all contribute quite a bit to the songwriting. Personally, I've not written anything in a while, mainly because we'd, we'd written so much for the first and second album, and we have two and a half hours worth of material. We don't kind of need, you know, I'm yeah. not that need. It's got to be sort of like really inspirational to no, you or yeah, something yeah, like that. That's when inspiration I've strikes, like when you're watching your drummer get all muddy and getting felt up by girls at a music festival. There's a song in that, you write a song, you know, that's, that's how things happen. True story, by the way. True story, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're not talking about the that's sad songs that you were like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ones. No, no. Um. But yeah, I think everyone writes songs differently. That's the thing. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've, all, you've all got your own style. So that's what yeah. makes it so individual when the whole thing comes together. That You know, you, you've got sort of that melting pot and it all comes together in, in yeah. one and that's what gives you the individual sound that you've got. So. There's plenty of like, songs that we all write and we look at it, maybe even they get to the rehearsal stage and go, you know what, it's a good song. It's not a major slice not, not for the band. Mm. Um, we may go off and do it on our own or whatever. But yeah, they, they, it's, got a, it's a two stage thing. They write the song and then does it work for us? And mm. sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And when they do, when they work, they work. Mm. They have a lot of fun in the uh, recording studio, uh, sorry, in the rehearsal studio, learning these new songs. But the way we built it from one part to the next, it just evolves as we haven't been in a studio much lately because we've been working on the same now. Yes. But once we start going in the studio again, probably next. It's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, nice yeah. having the luxury of not having to worry about it. Of know, course, yeah. Know, yeah, 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 yeah. Having a sort of second. No, because like you say early, like you said earlier on, forcing it is the worst thing you can do. It's, it needs to be sort of you know natural, doesn't it? Well, I know? think I wrote my first song in about a year and a half, just the other week. You know, and it's. It, it's only because I've not felt the need to, yeah. you know, and um, it just came quite naturally as it used to do, you know. Uh, but it's just again, when you've got kids and all that, it's, it's pretty hard, you know, and finding time to think. That, of know, course, yeah. Let alone write a song. And so. when when you do have, when you do have a bit of rest, you're like, oh god, I that's it. <laughs> 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 just need to have a rest. Well, the time is getting on, guys. So course, can, yeah. can, do, do you want to sort of like do perhaps two in a row for us? What, what yeah. we're we going to do? do a bit of a, med a bit of a medley. Something like that. Okay. Um, when you're enjoying yourself, either enough go quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So we'll do one cover and one of our own. A, a cover that you can find on our covers EP Americana, <coughs> which is on all good online retailers. Good sales pitch, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, iTunes, Amazon, all that sort of thing. Like yeah. That. Can you can you still yeah. buy it's a hard online. copy? If you, you can. can. In fact, there's one here. Yes. But if you contact yeah. us. Or come to one of our on gigs. your Facebook page or something like that. Yeah. We yeah. can sort stuff out. Yeah, we can. Yeah. The really usual point line: come to a gig. Yeah. Release point. We should mention our label actually. No, no, no music. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, no, no music. Our album. Yeah. <laughs> so, a big shout out to uh, No Music for distributing this record. Thank yes. you very much. Oh, yes, absolutely. Hard to find people <laughs> who do that kind of stuff. Of course. Yeah. Right. Okay. This is Ready? false and prison blues. One, two, three, four. My mom 
Jesus Don't Love Me, it was our first single from our debut album, Twist Your Bones, which is also available out there. Killing time whilst Capo's going on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'll just interrupt you with uh, some shout outs to uh, Diana, Aaron, Abby, Bizad, and Sue. Thank you very much for uh, listening to the show, guys. <laughs> Drunk, stole a car, lit a cigarette Got high, bought a while, hit my fuck, yeah Woke up, screamed and shouted at a suit man Bought a gun, robbed a bank, stole a hundred grand Why, I know, I never get to heaven But a man's gotta live, a man's gotta live Why, I know, I never get to heaven But a man's gotta live, a man's gotta live I'm going to hell, Jesus don't love me I'm going Crash the pool in a Cadillac Snarting lines out the back of a model's crack How hopes Las Vegas are dressed in black Met a preacher man tell me that he's coming back Why oh, I know I never get to heaven But a man's gotta, gotta live. live, a man's gotta live Why oh, I know I never get to heaven But a man's gotta live, a man's gotta live
<laughs> uh, Jay Snyder says he's uh, loving it. Jason, that's my brother. I always love playing that song. Oh, yeah, we're gonna, are we going to do a song for Jason? <coughs> that be my brother, and he's got a favourite song. Have we got room for one more? Yeah, I think we've got time for one more. What do you think, guys? Let's have one more. Yeah. We're going to do good one for Jay then. This good is. Uh, <laughs> I can find it. Well, I'm just going to unplug the mandolin. Oh, he's. Uh, what did it? Look, we've lost our tech. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> We're doing a, we're good times. Good times. Good times. Yeah. A song called Good Times. Good times. It's a very depressing song about really sad <laughs> <time> <laughs> <in> the reverse <world. laughs> psychology. Yeah, yeah. I, I pitched this once to my old guitarist in my one of my previous bands. Who heard the first couple of lines? Go. This is far too depressing. I said the song's called Good Times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's all the Keith Richards, right? <laughs> Alright. Ready? As I ever will be. sky turns black and gray and you can't make it through the day you feel the time is slipping through your fingers now and when that day begins and you got nothing left to put in you feel the world is slipping through your fingers now so scream out loud Too tired to fight You feel your hope Is slipping through Your fingers now When you're sitting on your own Or when the lonely place you call home You feel your life Is slipping through Your fingers now So scream out loud and disbelief You feel your love is slipping through your fingers now When you fall on sticks and stones And you just live with broken bones You feel your mind is slipping through your fingers now So scream out loud
Ladies and gentlemen, the most wonderful Mojo Slide. Guys, come and see us again uh, when you've got that album recorded. Uh, this is Ride, a song called Cali, taken from the album.